Day with the King is a 3ABN Australia television production developed to teach children about the Sabbath and to lead them through a study of the Bible. Remember to download your weekly study guide at adaywiththeking.com. So come on kids, join us now and each week for A Day with the King. I'm Auntie Nat. It's great that you could all join us to meet with the King. Come and join our worship time together. Auntie Cecily, it's great that you're here with us today. Hello, Auntie Nat. Hello, children. It's great to see you here today worshipping with us so that we can meet the King. Auntie Cecily, can you say a prayer for us to open our worship time together? Yes. Dear Father, we praise and thank you for bringing us safely through another week. Thank you for the Sabbath day and for all the children who are able to join us in worshipping you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Do you know this is a great time to reflect on our week and to see what God has done for us through the many blessings he's given us. Nick, you have a blessing to tell us about today. Um, it was a blessing when God um, protected me when I fell over and seriously injured my head. Um, I had, I had to um, stay home for um, a couple of days and not go out anywhere. And um, God just protected me through that. And I thought that was a blessing. That's great, Nick. Thanks for sharing that with us. Auntie Cecily, you have something to share with us as well about the Sabbath. Yes. Remember last Sabbath when we spoke about preparing for the Sabbath day? Well, another thing God wants us to do is rest and he provided a great example for us to follow. God rested on the Sabbath. In past studies, we've looked at Genesis 2, 1 to 3 and Exodus 20, 11, where the Bible tells us that God finished his work in six days mm. and on the seventh day he rested and he commands us to do the same. When Jesus came to this earth, he also rested on the Sabbath as an example for us to follow. Mm. Jesus rested on the Sabbath in life, but he also rested on the Sabbath in his death. In Luke 23, 52 to 56, it tells us the story of when Jesus died on the cross, which was Friday, also called the preparation day. His friend and disciples took his body down from the cross and laid it in a tomb. They quickly prepared the oils and spices that they were going to embalm the body with. Then they rested on the Sabbath. Luke 24, 1 to 6 tells us that when they came back on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, to embalm his body, the tomb was empty. Two angels told them that Jesus had risen. I think there is a very special message here for us. Resting on the Sabbath was so important to God that even in his death, Jesus rested on the Sabbath. Thank you, Arnie Cecily. That's wonderful news. Do you know another way to celebrate the Sabbath is to worship God in song? Pastor Rick is here to help us do just that. Thanks, Pastor Rick. Hi, boys and girls. Let's sing that lovely old song, Do Lord, okay? I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Way beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me.
Pastor Rick, can we sing this little light of mine? We certainly can. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. Can we please sing Whisper a Prayer? That's a lovely song. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening to keep your heart Thanks, Pastor Rick. It's great to praise God in song. Ella, we discovered a blessing this week at Sunnyside. Will we share that with the children at home? Yes. Okay, let's go have a look at that. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Dr. John Hammond. Welcome to the Australian home of Mrs. Ellen White. Come with me. I've got some stories to tell you. You know, everybody out there listening to my voice and you children sitting here on the mat, we all have somebody sitting next to us and we forget about it. It's our angels. I'm looking forward to the day when I meet my guardian angel. I have heard his voice and I have heard his voice a number of times in my life. And maybe I've seen him but I don't know. One day when my son, who's now 42, was just a little baby, we were driving up from Sydney on the F3, and it was late at night. And as I was driving along, an angel spoke to me. It was on the right-hand side, and I can still remember it. I've never forgotten. It said, what would you do if you met a car coming on the wrong side of the F3. And you know that it's impossible, don't you? Because it's a divided road. I was so surprised. I was looking for the angel, looking for the voice. I slowed down and the next second, two cars came around the corner. One was a stolen car and the other one was a police car chasing it. It missed me by that much. I could even see the expression on the face of the 15 year old boy. And there was a fatality that night, but not with us. And Alan White went by train all the way down to Melbourne for a camp meeting. And she had work to do. But the devil was around the outside. And he got into the hearts of some boys, we would call them hoodlums or yobbos, but she called them larrikins, and those larrikins were out to cause trouble. And they would uh, throw in firecrackers, they would yell, they would make noises during meetings, and when they knew that a lady called Alan was the special speaker, they laid a plan. They said, we're gonna come in in the middle of the night 
and we're going to undo the ropes on her tent. She wasn't staying in a hotel. She was staying on a tent in the campground. And they were very nervous and they said, we're going to go to the police. Now before when this happened, Alan said, don't go to the police. My angels will protect me. But this time, she let them. Maybe God had told her something. They went to the police and they brought out a police constable, a big, strong Irishman. And he walked around all night with his big stick, watching out for the larrikins, the gangsters. And you know, he came around the corner one night and he saw something over Alan's tent. He saw a light. And he thought, oh, those larrikins have set fire to her tent. And he just got his stick. He was going to wade into them. And he suddenly saw the light became the shape of an angel. He dropped his stick. He got on his knees. He was a Catholic, so he made the sign of the cross. And he looked at the angel, then he ran back to the police station. He put his stick on the bench and he said, I'm not going back there. I don't need to because Alan has an angel looking after her. He was so amazed and so overjoyed because he had seen Alan's angel. He left the police force. He studied his Bible. He joined our church and he lived in a little town in Victoria. And every time he stood up in church, he would tell people how he had seen Alan's angels. And he brought many, many people to Jesus because of what he had seen. Has any of you ever heard your angel? I think you probably have. And you people, watching and listening, when we get to heaven, it's going to be wonderful because we will meet and talk to our angel. I'm going to spend a million years listening to all the stories my angel will tell. And you'll do the same. God bless you. Hello boys and girls, happy Sabbath. Welcome to our Bible study. If you haven't got your Bibles ready yet, go get them now so you can follow along with us. Auntie Cecily, could you please say a prayer for us before we read the word? Yes. Dear Father, thank you for the blessing of owning a Bible. Please help the boys and girls understand what we read today. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 So we left the story last week after Noah and his family went into the ark and God shut the door. Elijah, how many days did it rain for? 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights. That's a long time, isn't it? That's about six weeks. Can you imagine not going out to play for six weeks because it's rained all that time? That was how long, how long it rained for. Remember, they'd never seen rain before, so it must have been a bit scary for them. But God took care of them and kept them very safe. Liam, can you please read Genesis 7, 18, 20 and 23 to 24 for us, please? The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters. The waters prevailed 15 cubits upward, and the mountains were covered. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. Mm. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. Okay, so the Bible says the waters covered the earth. There must have been a lot of water. What did we just read, Liam? That the waters were 15 cubits above the mountains. That's about seven and a half metres above the tallest mountain in the world. What's our tallest mountain? Mount Everest. Everest. Mount Everest. So can you imagine the amount of water there must have been? Seven and a half metres above that. That's a lot of water. What was destroyed by the flood? Everything. Everything. Only those inside the ark survived. How long do we read the waters remained on the earth? 
150 days. 150 days, which is around about five months. So for five months that ark was tossed to and fro in the water. Let's read Genesis 8.1 because I don't think God forgot Noah. Let's read that together. That's our memory verse. Then God remembered Noah and, and every living thing and, and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and, and, and the waters subsided. Oh, God is so good. He did not forget his servant Noah. Ella, can you please read for us Genesis 8, 3 to 5. And the waters receded continually from the earth at the end of the 150 days. The waters decreased. Then the ark rested in the seventh month, the 17th day of the month on the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually till, until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on top of the first day, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. Mm, so God directed the ark to rest in some, into some calm waters between the mountains of Ararat. And after a little while, the, the tops of the mountains became visible. And then Noah does something. He goes to the top of the ark and he lifts the covering of the ark. And let's see what happens. Elijah, can you read Genesis 8 verse 7? Then he sent out a raven, which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. So, Nick, can you please read Genesis 8, 9 to 12 for us, please? But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot, and she returned into the ark for him. For the whole waters were on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her, and drew her into the ark to himself. And he waited yet another seven days, and again he sent the dove out from the ark. Then the dove came to him in the evening, and behold, a freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth. And Noah knew that the waters had receded from the earth. So he waited yet another seven days and sent out the dove, which did not return again to him any more. Mm, thank you, Nick. Ben, can you please read Genesis eight thirteen to 14 for us? And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, that the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dried. Mm, so the water was gone. Now we, re we read last Sabbath that Noah entered the ark in his 600th year, in the second month. And now we've just read that Noah's 601st year in the second month was when the waters dried up. So how long were they in the ark for? About a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 600 and 601. That was a long time, wasn't it? Yeah. Imagine yeah. being in the ark with all those animals. It would have been a bit of a floating zoo. Do you think it might have been a bit smelly in there? Yeah, yes. it probably was. It was a very interesting environment. Now, when that water had dried up, do you think Noah just rushed out of the ark or do you think he waited? Wait. Wait. He waited. He waited on God for the angel to come down and open the door. Aunt Cecily, could you please read Genesis eight fifteen to 17 for us, please? Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and cattle and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. Okay, Sarah, let's see what Noah does next. Let's read Genesis 8 verse 20. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Let's look at our torchlight, Mrs. White's writings, and see what the light shines on that verse for us. Liam, you're going to do that for us today. Thank you. Their release, Noah. In the joy of their release, Noah did not forget him by whose gracious care they had been preserved. His first act after leaving the ark 
was to build an altar and offer from every kind of clean beast and fowl a sacrifice, thus manifesting his gratitude to God for deliverance and his faith in Christ, the great sacrifice. Mm. So that's why Noah was told by God that there had to be how many other animals? There was two animals and there was seven. seven animals. He had to take seven clean animals so there was enough animals to offer a sacrifice. Was Noah obedient and faithful? Yes. He was. Where have we read in the Bible of someone who did not want to give the proper sacrifice? Cain. Cain, that's right. By giving an animal sacrifice, it is required the shedding of blood, which pointed to that Christ was going to come and shed blood for our sins. Ella, you're going to read Genesis 9, 13 to 15. I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never be again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Mm, what an amazing promise. So every time you see a rainbow in the sky after it rains, that you know that God promises never to flood the whole earth again with a flood. That's been put there as a reminder that we remember the story of Noah and how faithful and obedient Noah was. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining us today in reading the Bible. It was lovely to have you along. Always remember that just like Noah, God will never forget you. If you ask him to, God will protect you through the storms of life, just like he protected Noah and his family in the flood. Next Sabbath, we are going to study about another man in the Bible who was also faithful and obedient. When we keep the Sabbath, we get to know God better and realize how much he wants to build a relationship with us. One way to strengthen our walk with the Lord is to read and study our Bibles. The Bible is filled with examples of how God the Father and Jesus the Son work together as one and showed us how to live our lives. We want to encourage you to read your Bibles, not only on the Sabbath day, but every day. Auntie Nat, would you like to tell the boys and girls about our devotional yes. that's related to our study this yes, week? Yes, I'm happy to do that. Yes, we have a seven day devotional study available on Noah and the Flood, part two. We studied this together in our Bible study. It's a devotional that expands on what we learnt today. You can download it for free and print it from our website, which will be on the screen. This will help you to read your Bibles every day and to spend time getting to know God. Auntie Cecily, shall we read our memory verse that we learnt today in our study? Yes. You ready to say it all together, children? Genesis, Genesis 8, 1. Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided. Auntie Nat, you ready to sing our blessing song to the children? Yes, let's just do that. Okay. Sabbath.
on Sabbath, I like going to church and coming home and having a nice lunch and spending time with my rabbits. On Sabbath, I like listening to the pasta and spending time with my family. On Sabbath, I like going to church and having a walk with my family on the beach. You have been listening to a production of 3AB in Australia Television. God bless you, kids. Remember to join us next week.